find the common ratio and the n term of the following GP. The first one here is 18 minus 12, 8, and the sequence continues, indicating that it's an infinite sequence. For the second one, we have 7, 10 whole number 1 over 2, 15 whole number 3 over 4. So to find common ratio of a geometric progression, we simply do that by dividing second term by first term, third term by second term in that order. So we are going to have T2 divided by T1, and that's going to be equal to minus 12. That's our second term in this sequence, while 18 is our first term. The highest common factor between 12 and 18 is 6. 6 can enter here, and we're going to have 2. 6 can enter here, we're going to have 3. So the common ratio here is minus 2 over 3. To check that up, we can as well use T3 minus T2. And that's going to be equal to T3. This time around, we have 8. T2, we have minus 12. So T3, 8. T2, minus 12. Again, the highest common factor between 8 and 12, we have 4. So that 4 enter here 2 times. 4 enter here 3 times. So that we are going to have minus 2 over 3. That's how to get common ratios. So the next thing we need to do for this particular number one, remember we are asked to find the common ratio and the end term of the GP. So what we've done here is the common ratio for the first sequence here. Next is to find the end term of that GP. And to get the end term of a geometric progression, Tn is equal to the first term multiplied by the common ratio raised to the power of n minus 1. So in this case, our first term is 18. So we can substitute into this formula. And our r has been found to be minus 2 over 3. So we can also multiply that. That is minus 2 over 3. Next, raise it to the power of n minus 1. So from this, we are going to have 18 multiplied by, from our indices, we are going to express this such that we have minus 2 over 3 raised to the power of n multiply by minus 2 over 3 raised to the power of minus 1. From our laws of indices, when we are dealing with multiplication laws of indices, but when you have the same basis, the rule according to multiplication law is that you add their powers. So minus 2 over 3, minus 2 over 3, you work with one and then sum their powers. That is what you have here in this step. So, splitting this further or simplifying this particular step, this is what we will get. Minus 2 over 3 raised to power n multiplied by minus 2 over 3 raised to power minus 1. So that here, we will have 18 multiplied by this minus 2 over 3 raised to power minus 1 is what is called the negative index. And for us to address this, we take the reciprocal of it. Minus 2 over 3 raised to power minus 1. We are going to have 1 over minus 2 over 3. Then we multiply this by minus 2 over 3 raised to power n, which is this one. Next, we will have 18 multiplying. The reciprocal of this that is 1 over minus 2 over 3 will be minus 3 over 2. We multiply this by minus 2 over 3 raised to the power of n. 
18 times minus 3, we have minus 54. Minus 54 over 2. Multiplied by minus 2 over 3 raised to the power of n. At this point, we have 54 over 2 giving us 27. Multiplied by minus 2 over 3 raised to the power of n. So this is the n term of that geometric progression. So that with this, they can ask for either the 10th term, the 15th term, or any term at all. By the time you have this, it's just for you to substitute that particular term. For instance, if it is the 10th term, just for you to raise it to the power of 10, and then you get the 10th term of that geometric progression. For the second one, we have 7, 10 and a half, 15 on number 3 over 4. So for us to address this, first of all, again, we are going to deal with the common ratio and the end term of that geometric progression. So for the second one, we have also T2 over T1. And our T2, according to the second sequence, is 10 whole number 1 over 2, while the first time is 7. So coming here, we have 10 and a half divided by 7. So changing this mixed fraction to an improper fraction, we are going to have 21 over 2 dividing 7. Right? That is equal to 21 over 2 multiplied by 1 over 7. So from here, you are going to have 21 times 1 giving us 21. 2 times 7 give us 14. The highest common factor here we have 7. 7 can enter here 3 times. 7 can enter here 2 times. So that the common ratio for this second sequence is 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 is the common ratio for the second sequence. Next is for us to look at the n term of that geometric progression. Just like we tested in the first instance, by dividing T3 also by T2, we can as well use 15 whole number 3 over 4 to divide 10 whole number 1 over 2, and you discover that we will arrive at this 3 over 2 as the common ratio for that particular geometric sequence. So, the next thing we are going to do is to find the end term of that geometric progression. For end term, again, we'll bring this Tn equal to a r raised to power n minus 1. The first term for that sequence, we have 7. That is 7 multiplied by a common ratio has been found to be 3 over 2. So we have 3 over 2. We raise it to the power of n minus 1. So from here, just like we have in the first number, we will have 7 multiplied by 3 over 2 raised to the power of n multiplied by 3 over 2 raised to the power of minus 1. Next, we have 7 multiplied by 1 over 3 over 2 multiplied by 3 over 2 raised to the power of n. So from here, we are going to have the reciprocal of this 1 over 3 over 2 will turn 2 over 3. 
So we are going to have 7 multiplied by 2 over 3. All multiplied by 3 over 2 raised to the power of n. So from here we have 7 times 2 giving us 14 over 3 into 3 over 2 raised to the power of n. So for the second expression, this is the n term of this second sequence.